the squishing right in between those two interfaces is the field of interest right from there. So those things are right in between the two Hallback arrays. So this compression, this mixing, would be a very, very interesting place to study. Right where we get the magnetic mixing. Just like that. So just like so. So those are the two fallback rays, magnetic fields. That's facing at the south end to the screen. The north facing out. You see, just like so. Very, very interesting. Magnetics and I've completely closed that TV. Well, that's good. Whoa! So, children, don't do this at home. First of all, why would children be watching this? Most of the universe consists of ionized gas, a conducting fluid, and MHD dominates astrophysics. These solar flares owe their strange form to magnetic forces. Across the gap, we can apply a radial horizontal magnetic field. Now we put the mercury in. To reveal vorticity, we have this free arm which tethers a float. The paddles of the float are free to rotate with the mercury and so reveal its vorticity. After the mercury reaches a steady state of clockwise motion, we can see that the vorticity is anti-clockwise, as we would expect. But watch what happens when we put on the field. There. Here's the motion again without the field. And it goes on now. The float has the same angular velocity as the frame holding it. So most of the mercury is now rotating like a solid body, slipping over both cylinders. Actually, the slip occurs across thin viscous boundary layers called Hartmann layers. With this mechanical analog, we can see what happens. We spin the loop without the field. When the field comes on, induced forces act briefly until the loop moves like this. There is now no change in magnetic flux linked. There is pure rotation, just as in the mercury. In the flow without the field, the vorticity is such as would cause a loop in the fluid to link a changing flux when the field comes on. So J cross B changes the vorticity to avoid this. As we repeat the experiment, observe the direction of the vorticity. With no field, it's anti-clockwise. The field makes it clockwise. We've now seen that magnetic forces can drastically alter a fluid motion
The J cross B forces have also produced intense anti-clockwise vorticity in the thin Hartmann layers. So here, J cross B has rearranged the total vorticity, not suppressed it.
little background information. This is the gizmo. There is an internal cylinder and an external cylinder. Coaxial counter rotating brushless electric motor. We have a brush contact going to an outer copper ring and an inner graphite ring like this on both upper and lower just to be able to measure differentials potentially across the plasmas. And we have the ability for counter rotation. We have the central core axis of the stainless steel and we have it attached to a high voltage flyback transformer to allow for a central core of ionization being augmented by the Americanium 8 radioactive seeded areas um, at the interface of the two carbon disks that are in apposition to one another ones uh, here. So in any event, that is just a little background information. And this whole thing will be embedded in a vacuum chamber. Um, we will allow we will be allowed to test voltages on the external portion of this rotating cylinder in plasma, this internal copper core. We have a dielectric, and then we have the internal graphite, which is sort of like a Faraday disk, as it were, on the inside, flat. And then this is the Halbeck array as a seated radial B field that is generating a B field in this direction. And the hope is that we will have in block plasma movement on the insides of this constrained portion where the plasma will be excited. With that, um, intense Hartman layer shear will occur. When that occurs, is it possible if we have the right gas to sustain a type of fusion reaction? Um, we shall see. In any event, Again, we have a radial B field, a knot field in the dead center, according to what the Halbeck array shows. But it shows up actually as a north, but the very, very dead center, I do believe, is a knot. So that's just a little background. We'll have two watt meters, and we'll be able to measure any increase or decrease in amp draw from the primary movers. from there. So that's just a little background before it's totally assembled. Oh yes, and there's you know a little brush pick up here, and there's a corresponding one across the way, but you can't really see where that is. Um, so we'll have you know, another brush pick up on the top. So far so good.